Hey, welcome to the SUP podcast, NYC. Okay, let's do that again. <laughs> <laughs> what was, that? was that jazzy ass intro? Hey, <laughs> you're listening live to the <laughs> SUP podcast. SUP podcast. <laughs> Bush your ass. You ready? Start from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I'm keeping this. Go. All right. We ain't. What's going on, guys? Uh, this is SUP Podcast, episode 135. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Lawrence Deloach. Uh, also, I have uh, two of my favorite people in the world, Chris Cheney. What's up, guys? And Luke Trovisi. Hey, what's up, Lawrence? Hey. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this stupid-ass voice, but I'm done with it. <laughs> Uh, we got a lot to get into, man, this week, man. I just, I, you know what, man, I was, I was perusing Instagram and I happened to see uh, that LRG is bringing back probably one of my favorite <laughs> hoodies ever, the Dead Serious hoodie. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, I don't know if you guys, if you, did you guys have that hoodie? I did not, but I was aware of it because of Kanye. All right, well, all right, yeah, that's okay, all right. Uh, I did not have it, but some of the hype East Asian kids in my school definitely had them, and I, I had the discount mummy one that you could get at PacSun. <laughs> Jeez oh. Louise. Yeah. When I, say, when I say that was, I mean, there's, I, I've gone on a lot of memorable goose chases in my life for, <laughs> for sneakers and clothing, the dead serious hoodie was one of those things that I just remember, man. I remember Kanye, like you said, Kanye uh, had the uh, the uh, the red LRG dead serious hoodie, and I think everyone was going ape shit for that. And I think it came out, and I think if I'm correct, three or four different colorways. And I remember there was the there was the teal one. Uh, there was a black, there was the red, and I, I'm not sure if there was purple. purple? I don't, yeah, I, don't I got that, the purple right here. I don't know because I think there was. I don't know if that was one of the OG colors. I just I do remember the the blue, the black, the red, and the the teal. I don't remember if there was a there. There might have been a fourth. I don't know if it was purple, and I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say it was purple because I don't know. I just remember the three off the top of my head. So I was aware was of the. Uh huh. What? No, go go go. No, what were you going to say? I was going to say, so I was aware of these, but I caught on late. So I think, like, once I, like, decided to try to, like, uh, educate myself on the space, that's maybe, like, 2008 or nine. I think that's when I first saw these. It was because of that picture of Kanye wearing them at, like, some McCartney thing. Mm -hmm. But this was, like, this was too, uh, I guess, insider to reach me at that time like being outside of boston this was not like kids weren't wearing this like no one knew what the fuck this was yet all right dude when i say when i say being a kid a new york city kid in college at the time who was super like man kanye like this is what i'm this is why i always say man what travis scott is doing now kanye was doing you know 15 years ago like yeah absolutely if if you saw yay and some shit it was like yo I got to have it. And I remember, dude, I went, this was, it was like Thanksgiving break. I was home. I was going to every, I was going to, there was Jimmy Jazz. I was going to Dr. J's. I remember I, uh, I got the black in a, in a large because they didn't have any more extra larges. The red was because it was the Kanye color, the red fucking dead serious hoodie sold out everywhere. Right. Right. And the blue and the teal one, was like the the kind of like it was like uh okay I guess you know if I'm gonna have one I'll take it but dude when I say I'm not even lying to y'all man I I think I called are they every Jimmy Jazz and fucking Dr. J's <laughs> in Brooklyn Manhattan I was just like I gotta have this dead serious hoodie and it, it it was one of those things where it kind of like it was one of those things where you, obviously you couldn't wear it every day. And it's a yes, special hoodie. The, you can't. This is once a week, maybe. Once this a is, week. This is fucking. That's maybe like it became my Halloween costume every year. Yep. Yeah, like, yeah. I would go to Chipotle and get like three dollar, like three dollar burritos, and if you had, you had to wear a costume. So I was like, I'm gonna be the dead serious guy. 
And I think I, I was dead serious guy from 2000, you know, like, I think it was like 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Like I was wearing that, that hoodie because that would be the only time I would wear it. And, um, but at the same time, it was the chase. So to yeah. see LRG like bring, retroing the hoodie, I think that's, a, it's obviously it's a good thing for the brand. It's just, I want to see who, who gets seated with it and who rocks it. Because, you know, LRG is tr- obviously, you know, they're trying to make a comeback, but I don't know, man. I'm, I'm in, this is very, I'm into it. I love it. It's fucking, yeah, it was, it was fire, man, back in the days. Yeah, this is a good retro. This is a good pull from history to not, because not only is it such a great callback to a Kanye moment, which all callbacks to a Kanye moment are amazing, yeah. but you get to re educate an entire class of, uh, you know, people who are into this shit because kids now have no idea what this is and they're confused why people like Lawrence and I and you know, Luke are like at least remotely ex- like they don't understand yeah. where the excitement comes from because they weren't here, they were like five probably or less. They were probably weren't even born, some of these kids, when this was worn by Kanye. Well, That's it's a crazy so- thought, yeah. It's, it's just so funny, man. Like I said, man, everything like fashion is so cyclical, man. Cyclical, cyclical, whatever you want to call it. It's a fucking it's a circle. Yes. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I was just thinking, man, I was like, you know, 2005, you, you were wearing, if you were like super in the, in the loop, you had the Dead Serious hoodie or you had the Jeezy Snowman drug t-shirt. Like it was those two were, you know, with some So babes. the Jeezy shit made it to Boston because my boy got uh, suspended for wearing a snowman shirt to school. <laughs> I was, I was in college and I, I remember wearing, uh, I was wearing, I wore the snowman t-shirt to class one day. And I remember one of my t- professors said, why is your snowman so angry? And I wanted to be like, <laughs> I wanted to be like, bitch, he sell drugs. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I couldn't do that, man. It was, you know, but I, it, it's just, it just brings back memories. And, and actually, I think I still, honestly, I, I hoard so much old shit that I still have. I think I don't have the teal dead series, but I still think I have the black one somewhere. So oh, maybe I'll pull it out, buddy. Oh, I know, shit. I, I know. I think I do. I'm not sure because there's do so much show. There's so much stuff from like, you know, that era, like 2000, mid 2000s that I still have. I still have some of my old NBA jerseys and, and, um, and, and like sneakers from the mid 2000s that have obviously died on me, but. Yeah, man. If I have that that hoodie, man, I may not need to uh, <laughs> cop the retro. So, so actually, it's funny, Lawrence, because you 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 know you spoke so like livid about this hoodie. When I was like, look, when I was trying to get links for the show and shit, I uh, mm. one of the first links that's high up in the search for the LRG Dead Serious hoodie is an Urban Dictionary uh, <laughs> entry for the hoodie. Mm. So just to read it <laughs> real quick, because it's it ta- he, th- whoever wrote this is pr- you actually probably wrote this the way that this is written in 2008, so, my guy. Yeah, it says <laughs> this is from t- May 18th, 2008. Um, it reads the most coveted hoodie <laughs> history. <laughs> first exposed. What a weird word to use for this. First exposed to the public when Kanye West rocked uh, the sample at a Stella McCartney, which I assume is Paul McCartney's daughter fashion show the hype just kept building trust me this is the closest thing to crack streetwear industry has ever produced and leave it to lrg to once again break new ground (laughs) oh this is funny but respect to lrg for sure uh the details are sick glow in the dark uh anatomically correct skeleton printed on the back front so now it's just sucking his dick but it's just (laughs) so funny i wonder do you think there's like other Urban, like funny hype beast urban dictionary shit that we could look up. Yeah, probably. I'm sure there is, yeah. Yeah. Well, oh wait, let's just look up hype beast real quick, just to get the 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 common lore. Can I type? Okay. Oh yeah, there's a lot of hype beast shit. Okay, this, this one's, one's from 2006. The, this one, yeah, oh, these are like, damn, these are OG entries. This these is are a, relics. These are like. Now these words are in like our 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 entire like uh, country's lexicon. Yeah, and uh, normal uh, nomenclature is that the correct yeah. nomenclature? Nomenclature. A hype beast is a kid that collected clothing, shoes, and accessories for the sole purpose of impressing others. <laughs> <laughs> Although the individual may not have a dime to their name, they 
<laughs> like to front like they are making more than everyone else. Equipped with mommy's credit card, the hype beast will try his hardest to make sure that every pair of Nikes he saw with Jay-Z wearing on 106 and Park. I appreciate that. I mean, it's, it, it, this still hasn't changed. I mean, you know, slight, <laughs> slight changes over time. 14 years, though. This is pretty the accurate. Core, the core of the message is still the same. Look up bathing apes. Bathing apes? Yeah. Like the Bape, shoes. Bapes does. Oh, I spelled apes wrong. Whoops. Sorry. Don't get mad at me. Bath, bathing AOs. <laughs> bathing AOs. Bathing apes. From 2008. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is funny, too. Uh, something that Soldier Boy has and haters are angry about his possession of them. They are presumably primates in the shower, but the origin is unknown. Wow, they didn't even know what bathing apes were at the time. Oh, wait, literally? <laughs> Yo, that is funny. Lawrence, give us one to look up. Um, uh, you got it, buddy. I believe in you. Uh, you can do Yeezys or some shit. You can try Yeezys. Yeezys? Okay. Ooh, yeah, what what does Urban Dictionary say about Yeezys? Easy shoe or some shit. No, no, no. Go oh, yeah. Uh, Yeezy sneaker, I'll try. Yeah, no, it's just, it, just, it just says shoe. Like, just, uh, yeah, you just had shoe. Easy okay. shoe. Jesus. This says <laughs> Yeezy shoe, Adidas's <laughs> overpriced version of Roshi's that was created by Kanye West. This was right. made 2017. At the time, not wrong. <laughs> no, I get not wrong. But yo, this is funny. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get high later and just Google uh, whatever. Now look on up Urban one Dictionary. to one suck. Look at that one quote colon one. One to one what? One colon one. Oh my god. What are you doing? Who knows? One colon one. Yeah. S U C C. I see this all the time on Reddit. A one-to-one -one suck? Yeah. It's one of my favorite terms in... in okay, I'm not familiar in, with this. Uh, yeah. Term used frequently by our fashion reps and our rep sneakers to express a replica piece of designer clothing that looks so authentic it will result in getting your dick sucked because you look so fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot, Luke. I this, is, this is a more recent one. <laughs> yeah, this was October 1st, 2018. So the newest out of all the ones that we looked at is one to one suck, which I would like to get into the nomenclature of our our listeners. <laughs> okay, well you uh one to one suck for sure, Luke. <laughs> you mean it? <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny though. Holy shit. I'm definitely gonna do that later. Let's look up Bro, all these terms I'm, and see. Absolutely. Actually here, one. this is a good thing for the listeners. If you do this, go on the Discord and then copy and paste your favorite hype beast urban dictionary entry. Yeah. That'd be good. Get that, give oh, that screenshot. Fun activity for the Discord. Yeah, and you'll get you you get your levels up. <laughs> That's true. That's uh, very I'm true. I'm at level seventeen. I'm a level seventeen sneakerhead in our in our in our group. That's funny. <laughs> so we talk about so Kanye. You know, like I said, dead serious Kanye first dude and and that shit created waves. Uh. We actually, uh, you know, uh, Kanye is talking about he's going to be on Joe Rogan this week. Yeah, which is, uh, I think, a long time coming. He announced that he was going to do an episode a, a long time ago. I forget which one, uh -huh. uh, which which Kanye, uh, you know, rant slash uh, expose. But, yeah, they've been talking about this for a while. Are you guys excited? I'm Honestly, you know, I can't, I'm going to be honest with you. I think I may have watched Joe Rogan one time i have i really i've never really watched it yeah uh a friend of mine you know uh he watches joe rogan faithfully and re religiously every you know every day basically uh so i mean i'm i'm looking forward to you know, to the 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 uh sound clips like you know the, the the shit that kanye says that people are like yo this guy's legit crazy but i don't know if i can say it's like like four hours right it depends so like yeah i i'll watch based on a guest so, like, if this one of our pe friends, like, people that were friendly were from the comedy world, I'll watch. Um, so, like, you know, when the scans have gone on, like, Tim Dillon, like, some of those guys. Uh -huh. Or people that I'm interested in hearing politically, I'll listen. But, yeah, like, sometimes, like, if he has Alex Jones on, dude, it's, like, seven hours. 
but other times it's like maybe two hours because maybe the guest has some shit to yeah, do. Yeah, for so the most depends. part, they'll be like two hours, two and a half hours. Yeah. If it's like somebody he doesn't really know. If it's somebody yeah. he knows, they'll just bullshit about deer hunting and DMT for six hours. Yeah. Really? I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's why. It's old white dudes. That's, that's the whole podcast. You really got to go based on guests. Uh-huh. It's, it's like, oh, my old white dude friends are here. Let's fucking bullshit about everything and smoke weed, you know? Yeah. In when he cabin. has like when he has the wild cards on though, and Kanye is definitely one of the wild cards, it's usually a good show. Got so, you. Kanye was actually on Nick Cannon's podcast uh last month, uh, on Cannon's class. It was fucking great. There's one line in there that made me laugh real hard. Uh Kanye goes, That's what I hate about being a one billionaire. Because if you go to a Taco Bell, you're not a billionaire anymore. <laughs> 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 yo uh dude kanye is so funny <laughs> he's so yeah. funny dude he's yeah. like yeah the, the canon class interviews are really good so if you think that the rogan one is, is doo-doo you could just x out of that one and just listen to the canon class ones all right I'm, I'm i'm excited i actually uh yeah like i said i'm gonna i'm gonna probably give that a spin you know just to see you know i don't know it's it, it, yeah i'll give it a spin because yeah, well, i mean so like just based off like what the charlemagne interview was mm-hmm. i'm imagining that it's going to be kind of similar uh because both rogan right. and why charlemagne, is that chris why is that because they're both good radio interviewers luke what did you think just, i was what what all right what i'm just checking i'm just checking on you that's all <laughs> you're trying to fucking get me in trouble yeah, you do that by yourself. <laughs> yeah, I do plenty. No, but I think it's going to be similar to that because uh, both Charlemagne, although from different different areas of life, Charlemagne and Joe have been great interviewers of their time. So I think it's just going to be interesting because they're both seasoned but have no experience with, especially Rogan, has no experience with what Kanye can bring to the table. So this is going to be cool. Yeah, it should be very interesting, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm scared for uh, Kanye's did you ever do DMT response? Because he might just be like, I hear you, like, you do DMT, that's cool and all, but have you ever talked to an inside of a sneaker or some shit, you know? And he'll, like, go into a full riddle. Who knows, man? But, I mean, yeah, this is it's going to be cool either way. So I'm going to be looking for that Friday for sure. Friday. Uh, I, I want to go on a Kanye uh, mini rant, uh, like mini rant uh, right now. Uh, I'm fucking upset. Uh, because I was really excited about trying to get a pair of Union Force from the moment they they released, mm. and I fucking struck out and struck out multiple times. And then Friday was the fucking death blow on sneakers app where I, I didn't get the off noir uh, Union Four, and I'm very upset. And I feel like this is a problem. And I'm I'm fucking mad. I'm like I'm really angry. I know I don't sound angry because I know the way I said it. I'm fucking mad. Like I, that doesn't sound like a Lawrence like angry. Voice. I'm <laughs> pissed that I missed out on these. And you know it's like you got to realize. I mean the sneaker game. Obviously, you know it's a little. You know you ain't gonna win everything. But at the same time, I mean like goddamn. Like I mean fuck man. The moment I saw them shits, I was like wow. These are fucking fire. Yeah. And for me to miss out. And it's funny because my boy, uh, who he he's in the sneakers and he uh struck out too, but he said something and this is what made me realize that, you know, remember I remember I told you guys, I think what makes a shoe like shoe of the year or makes like one of the top shoe of the year when people who really aren't in the sneakers somehow get in the like th- a certain pair of sneakers, like right. That, mm-hmm. And he hit me up, and he was like, "God damn, man, I don't pay resale for anything, but I'm thinking about pulling the trigger on those Union Fours." And wow. And you know, and, and I said, "Man," and I'm looking, and I'm like, you know, people was like, "These are doodle. These ain't gonna like." And and already, like the the guavas are like, you know, in a size twelve, they're like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, you know. And and a fucking and and these are just gonna like rise, rise, rise. They're gonna be twelve, thirteen hundred very shortly. And I'm just upset. I didn't like the way it played out. I wanted a pair. I feel you. Yeah. I I mean, I'm very careful about when I wear mine. I'm just grateful that I have that. You know. Yep. But these, I dude, seriously, I think these are in running for shoe of the year. Like just overall, 
And they kind of cheated just because of the amount of times you had the attempts to get them and how long the rollout was. Right. Um, what do you mean they cheated? Well, how many times? I mean, I mean that loosely. I don't mean like they just they like got to stay in the limelight longer than most shoes. So like the hype got to stay at a high level for a longer period of time. So they feel more important because the, 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 the deadline of release was extended. Yeah, it was extended. I mean, um, not only because the first, the blue uh, glove pictures, like that was very like talked about just in the way they were revealed. And then you had the tongue. I think we covered this like last episode, the episode before. Just the general rollout of the shoe was incredible. And then for it, you get the union drop. Then you have all the raffle shit. Then you get the sneakers drop, which got delayed an extra whatever. And it just, it seemed like it was around for so long. Everyone was still talking about it. Even, you know, from when the first picture came out till now. Yeah, that's one thing I, I will say. A lot of times, a lot of times, you know, sneakers, they, like you said, they do come and they do go. Like, they, like they have their one release for the most part, and then it's yeah. like, all right, it's over. This, there was multiple opportunities, per se. So I, I, I definitely agree with you. And I mean, like I said, I think there's no perfect app. Like, there's no perfect way, you know, for for a sneaker app to be run because it once again if there's you know say there's you know four four thousand pairs on a, on an app and you got you know four hundred thousand people going for it you know what i'm saying obviously it's not yeah. going to be there's no perfect way but it just feels as if sneakers is just terrible like it's just the app itself is like and the thing about, about it is people keep coming back for more you understand what I'm saying? Like it's like yeah. it's like you 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 know you know sneakers with you know I remember when they did the fucking the uh, the the Ben and Jerry's and then you know that was a Tuesday and then you were like man fuck this app and then you like but I'll be right back for the Travis two seventies in in three Absolutely. days. So I kind of it's 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 kind of upsetting. Like I said, man, it's not um. I mean, dude, I've I've had I, look at that. I mean, a, a, a fucking twelve is fourteen is you know the the lowest yeah. axe is fourteen hundred dollars, bro. Like, I mean, that is insanity. To me. Yeah, that's really high. That's much higher than I because you know we discussed this guava specifically going up and down. I mean, the whole collection we discussed, but like uh -huh. the pink being the most exclusive one, I didn't even think it would stay this high because like the first couple sales before it came out was like two thousand. But the yeah. fact that the fourteens at two thousand now is crazy. Yeah, we yeah, we, none of us saw this coming. At least with. Uh, with well, immediate release. Well, you know, we knew that it would get to, you know, yeah, I think uh, four four figures. But I mean, it's, you know, we're less than two months in. And, you mm -hmm. know, and I mean, if if you look at when they first, you know, when, when the, the sneakers were released in Union at the end of August. And then, you know, people started getting their pairs in mid-September. I don't think we saw this jump happening, like you said, this fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, cause you know, you remember we look at the, you look at the union ones and yeah, you know, now they're, you know, at, you know, over two grand, you know, on the, on the secondary market, but I don't think obviously it, it was six, seven, eight hundred, a thousand, you know, it, it is, it's the game, you know, but like I said, it, it's frustrating, especially when you want something. And I think, you know, that's what, that's what happens in this game now. So it's like, you get something else that you can flip and then you'd be like all right well i guess i, I i'm gonna take these 150 dollars shoes that i can you know make money off of and then get the shit i want it's it's just the it's a the game is like really it's like, a dirty game man it's a dirty <laughs> game it, it really is man you know so it really is yeah i don't i don't want to sound salty about it because like i said i mean i've had my luck with plenty of shoes in the past and i, I have you know, but at the same time, it's like, fuck, man, you wanted, you know, a certain pair, and it's like, oh, okay, cool, no shot. No shot. <laughs> no. So, I mean, we have, there's, you know, it, it's the same thing. Nike is so, Nike is so elusive with their bullshit that, for example, you, you, um, you got the official Nike images of the off-white five, the white off-white five. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that was slated for October 24th release. Mm -hmm. But all we saw was the official images. We didn't see anything else. So no, you know, no celebrities were seated. The pairs, no influencers, 
had, you know, pairs on social media to drive the hype up. So what does Nike do? They push the release back. Why? Because now they've given you an official image. They have you saying, okay, now it's like, okay, let's put them in the right person's hands to drive the hype up even more. You know, oh, let's shit. let's have someone rock these, mm-hmm. like, you know. And and now we, we've pushed the release back. So now it just causes you to even have more mass hysteria on the shoes. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely, uh, I, don't, I don't know how they fucked up the rollout on this because they usually are pretty good, especially with like Virgil shoes. But yeah, I mean, no, you're correct in everything. They're, they're delayed. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, they're going to be making sure there's a little more hype on these before they come out. I don't, but here's the thing, though. This is straight out of Nike's playbook. We've seen this before. We saw yeah. this with, we've seen it with the, the the Sakai's where they were pushing dates back here and there to. to yeah, that is. Yes, like, no, that is right. You're that you're right on that. Yeah. This is what they do. Like this is. There was. I don't think it was ever. I don't think it was ever designed for an October release. That's true. I could. I, I could see that. Yeah. I don't ever think it was. We're really going to release these on October 20th. No, it was never in the cards. The cards were to get people to drop, like I said, drop the official images, get people excited, and then say, and now, you know, people are like, well, when are they coming out? When are they coming out? And then they drop it. You know, it's, 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 it, it's perfect marketing. And it just, it, like I said, it's another pair of sneakers that Nike is going to put people through hoops for just to get a pair of. So you got your, uh, conspiracy hat on saying that they had planned to delay it. So that's what you're saying? That like they were I like... Think, I, don't, I don't think he planned it. I think it just never was... Yeah, it was never supposed to release on October 24th. I just... This tinfoil hat has perforations yeah, in it. I don't, Little so, I so. so wait, because I'm not even like mad at what you're saying. I just want to be clear on the way, how you're saying it. So it was slated for a release date that they knew. And they're like, alright, let's just tell them like mid-October 1st and then, you know, then we'll do our thing. And then we'll push it back. I feel, yeah, I feel like, you know, like with the off-white, uh, with the, uh, the off-white fives, the black ones, we knew it was for, you know, for All-Star Weekend release. But we, yeah. we saw so many pics of them on feet prior, you know, to the actual release. You know, weeks before, we, you know, we knew. And I feel like with this, like I said, the, if, if Nike feels like, you know, it's not going to be enough mass hysteria on the sneakers, then they'll, they'll, they know what they, they know what they need to do to make shit happen. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. yeah, like I said, I've seen it. I've seen, this is so many times we've seen this before. We, I mean, we literally saw, I mean, we just saw it with the fucking union. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. You might, you might be, you might be right on that. I, I never thought of it as like a planned thing the way that you're kind of implying that it might be, but. I mean, yeah. it makes sense. You got, well, there's a plenty of examples. I mean, if we go back to past yeah. episodes too, I, we talked about many delays. Like you said, mentioned the Sakai one. So yeah, you know, that makes sense. It's just interesting to think about that as a uh, marketing plan. Is the delay? Oh, oh totally. Yeah. 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 I don't like when Lawrence shows us behind the curtain, like what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like when he got a detective hat on? No, because he's talking sense. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He's usually the sense of the podcast though. Yes, he is. It's uh yeah, man. It it is what it is. But like I said, I mean we, we look at these, we just this it's just I don't know, man. It's like who who I mean, DJ Khaled got his pair, you know, Kylie's gonna get her pair, Trav is gonna get his pair, and then we're gonna and then we we get the Instagram pick and then we get everyone, you know, hyping it up. Yeah. You know, it it, it you you can't sell the shoe, and, and, and I mean you can, but you can't sell the shoe unless the uh, influencer, the celebrity, has the pair first. Right. You just, you just can't. You can't sell it because it's like, how the fuck will people know that it's fucking? It's a dope shoe to have. Yeah, Offset's yeah. not seen wearing it. How am I supposed to know to buy it? Honestly, how, I, how know, as I'm, a regular consumer? <laughs> yeah. I I don't think Offset is. I don't think. I mean, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I don't think Offset is a guy that you know. People are like, oh man, I got. Oh no, I, I was I joking it. using him. If oh, I was serious, I would have used like Travis or somebody. But. Oh no, 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 I'm just saying, like <laughs> Offset. Yeah, like Offset to me is one of those guys that's like, all right, but like you said, like it's the Khalids, it's the Trav, it's the Kylies, it's you know, it's those the Beavers, the Malones. He's got like Offset's got like one pair of shoes in his hands and one on his feet on his way to divorce court. He would do that. That's some. <laughs> that's some shit. Where like any of those Migos guys. The thing about 
people like the Migos with the fashion shit is like they do anything weird. Yeah. And I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, what do they know that I don't? Mm-hmm. They just know what works for them. Like yeah. silk shirts and like um like four gold chains, it just works for them. Mm-hmm. They like Quavo knows what he's doing. <laughs> well, you know, Lawrence, you you mentioned that like this is a regular thing by Nike, but I think you know, going on to our next topic, we can talk about something that's unregular for Nike, which is uh, suing somebody, which is what's happening with the, the pigeon dunks that Warren Lotus is doing. Oh, my God. We can we could talk about this for fucking for days. Man. We could. But, I mean, because we, we had our conversation. We don't need to rehash. But and it's kind of weird that like two weeks later, Nike has that, <laughs> that lawsuit. I think, I, I, listen, I'm telling you, they listened to us and they went, what? Sub podcast is talking about this guy. That's too much. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, wait, look, look. Who do you think at Nike listens to this? Uh, I'll tell you who. Um, let me just look up my list of <laughs> employees <laughs> that have our email that have are part of our our Discord. You could join oh, our okay. Discord. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Follow. Uh, it's does Chris. ZX, does ZX Runner? <laughs> <laughs> Does he work for Nike? No, we met him. He, Does no, he work for Nike? They, they all live here and work here in different things. That's not I, sneakers. I've met all, I met all of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, yeah. just, it's just crazy to think about the heat. They actually pulled the trigger on one of these replicas, um, and it only it took Jeff Staples' cosign to do it. Yeah, because I think, I think that comes down to uh, Jeff Staples giving this brand – uh, some sort of yeah, he gives them the the staples bump, like a go, like an approval, like a go ahead. And then that's when they're like, "Well, <laughs> it was fine when he was doing it by himself." Well, that's no, it co- it comes to a thing where it's just like, okay, they they are not going to touch Bape stuff probably because it's too too old. No, they now, they uh, they own a portion of Bape stuff. Oh uh, well, no, 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 no. I mean, like when they first, I'm saying not like I'm saying when it first dropped, they didn't right. do anything. I right. thought they bought. I thought they bought up the company almost immediately. No, a Bape, not Bapesta, not not Bape, but like the Bapesta, like the licensing. So they they would like they would help make the the shoes, and then they were able to get more unique colorways in, which is why they were able to apply their that kind of model to the Air Force One. Well, either way, I don't know. I don't know about that. You might be right. You might be putting on some shit, but it's the it's just the idea that these other fakes exist. Right. With the exception, of, I was trying to give Bape the exception because they were like so old, like a long time ago and older. But these guys now must all kind of think they're in jeopardy of making these uh, replica knockoff whatevers. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think just Warren, Warren Lotus was a little bit like everybody in the Discord kind of agreed that he was kind of stupid about how he went about it. I mean, yeah, for sure. Because he was producing, I think he made about 10,000 pairs total as far as like amongst across like the four dunks that he's done. Yeah. And I think that's where it's like now now you're kind of able to go into like a, a, a like a bigger legal realm. I think if it's like if it because if you're making like 500 to 1000 copies of something, you could argue that you're just you're a very small batch artist who's doing like a a piece and you're right. carrying. Okay. But this uh, is you're saying it it cost uh, cross like a corporate line. Exactly. Something like that. Like when it's like when Back in the day, when if you downloaded a certain number of songs on LimeWire or Napster, uh, you would get you'd get into like you get a an email or, or like you get a a, a letter in the little, mail, from little a, finger wag, a little finger wag that's like I don't do it anymore. We're gonna get you. I also like I also feel like Lotus was like really like asking for it when he's like specifically calling the sneaker dunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's man, also like, another thing. That that's a that's a you that right there. It's like come on, bro. Like, you you're 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 taking shit that Nike's already done, and then you're calling it something that they have you know trademarked. That is their thing, mm-hmm. and you're just like the Warren Lotus, you know, Jason Dunk, and it's like <laughs> really, bro. Like that's yeah. where I think you know, and I feel like you know I feel like Staple was you know stupid as fuck too for. Because I think Staple was just trying to get some clout too for you know he's chasing you know because with Lotus you know he didn't have to you know co-sign that because now you fucked up your relationship with Nike and you know Nike is not coming back to Staple. They unfollowed him on Instagram, I guess. They That's followed, what I'm saying. Unfollowed him on Instagram, but he's still in the documentary. Oh, uh, the the, the dunk, dunk documentary. documentary. 
Yeah, the do- the dunkumentary. Well, I yeah. mean, he's, he, he still has had one of the the most influential dunks. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I mean, he's you know, I mean, come on, like we we yeah. that was front page of fucking uh, newspapers. I, I mean, mean, people right. pointed that dunk. I think we've gone over this too, but we people pointed that dunk for making this culture sort of like a household thing, right? Yeah. Because it was the first, like you said, the newspaper headlines, all that shit. It was the first shoe to do that. Yeah, no, no I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's like. I mean, that's like, you know, I, I hate to say it because this is like kind of like this is really insider and this is kind of like, OK, Lawrence, don't talk about this. But like it's like wrestling, like Chris Benoit, like, you know, oh, saying, you know like, like you can try to you can't re- I mean, you can erase him. But, you know, people the, he's still in the history books. He's been a world champion. He's, yes. You know, he's still he was part of the four horsemen like, you you know. So I, I, I understand what you're saying, like Nike unfollowed and you're like, well, uh, they put him in a documentary and it's like, yeah, I mean, he fucking, I mean, he, like I said, he's contributed to, you know, this. Sure. So, I, I, you know, you can't just erase him. I mean, you, you could, but then it's kind of like, oh man, like, you know, oh man, we go from, you know, Tiffany's and, you know, and fucking, you know, all that. And then we don't talk about, we don't mention pigeons, like. Just can't do it. That's true, but like they had him featured. Like I don't know if you watched the first episode of the of the dunkumentary, I, which is what we're calling it now, I guess. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! Um, mm-hmm. But he was featured in like the first episode is about eighty the the uh, mid eighties uh, when the final four was all Nike sponsored, uh-huh. and then they made the the dunks for like and it was like a combination of three shoes, but. Uh, the whole thing like jeff was in there and he was like talking about history stuff now i understand like first of all the it came out uh they were filming probably way before any of this warren lotus stuff was coming out for sure to begin with so obviously they have the footage but it's i mean they're like seven minute episodes so it really takes no time to just take jeff and just go okay we'll just keep you for just the jeff's like just the staples dunk you know what i mean like, they could have taken him out of that one, too. I mean, I think this just might be, like, a girlfriend overreaction thing. I think it might be, like, they just, they're just just putting him in timeout right now. Well, yeah. I mean, we could say that, but, I mean, Nike has shown that, you know, no matter how hot your designs are, how, how much heat it brings, you know, Sean Witherspoon, a perfect example. Like, you know, if they don't want to fuck with you, they're not going to fuck with you. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't yeah. know if it's a girlfriend being in timeout as opposed to, like yo, dude, like you wilding out, like you know, you know. So I, I, I'm not gonna say that. Yeah, it's just a little dust up. Like I think Nike's really, and the fact that they're like they're you know suing this guy and tying up Warren Lewis's money and all of this shit. Like I think you know. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Staple. It was dumb. It was stupid. <laughs> well, uh, my plan for that documentary is because th- they're such short episodes. I'm going to, like, wait into this watch all of it at once. Probably, like, in the full mm. documentary format they originally had. I don't know why they're breaking it up like it's Quibi episodes or whatever, but... I uh, think... They, no, I think they... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Luke. No, I, go ahead, Lawrence. I was going to say, I feel like I feel like people are... They're doing that because people's attention spans are very short. So, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, you know, Quib, that's what Quib, Quib... Look at Quibi. Quibi is the same shit. They do like sneaker, uh, like the lean away, gotta have it shit. It's right. the same thing. It's it's fucking, it's quick bites because people are, attention spans are very short. You can, yeah. you know, it's like, it's like, all right, you have a, a, say you have a Netflix two hour documentary. Like, yeah, you may binge, but like there's some people who are going to watch, you know, part of it here, part of it there, part, like, it's just like, break it up, break it up. So hold on one second while I share my screen. How do you guys feel about Not only this? That, like the sneakers app is like where the only place you can really watch the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just an I like it's it's a strategy to get more people on sneakers, mm-hmm. like for longer. Oh yeah, for sure. They're definitely trying to make that like a real platform, like a social networking platform for Nike. Oh well, yeah, look, yeah. Look how they try to look how it's interactive. You know what, yeah. what laces would you put in your this? And you know it's it's very interactive now. Which I'm still adamant. Don't answer those. Because we're just giving them free info. They don't need any more. But anyway. It's true. Um, no, I wanted to, wanted to ask you guys. So I, I got this thing up here that Eric Costin posted, like the promotion or whatever. So they have the staple dunk, mm-hmm. which you can always call back to like one of the first important shoes of this culture. Then they have the chunky dunkies next to it. Right. Mm-hmm. That is too new for me. 
that just came out. How do you? How is this in the, the documentary? Travis Scott ones right next to it on, on top of that. Yeah, and I don't like them there either. Okay, well, I mean, let's keep let's let's just be honest with each other. And and the the new era of SB dunks, right? That you know where everyone's going crazy and sneaker and these sneakers are starting out at four figures. The Travis Scotts and the Chunky Chunky Dungies are the two biggest dunks of the year so far in terms yeah. of in terms of height in terms of the fact that they were on on sneakers the you know like the like it so yeah i mean the Travs weren't even on sneakers but the travis like you know because of who travis scott is those were yeah those were two of the biggest sbs this year in general and just you know you could put them up there in terms of maybe top five top seven in terms of height yeah yeah okay i get yeah. it yeah it's not that so, uh, I just I was hoping that it was going to be more like because part of this is like the kids need to know and right. I say that sounding old but you're like old you're old I am old I am absolutely yeah. old in this space but the, I I don't know it, it might be just me but like these kids don't know enough to like carry the history correctly and now I'm sounding like wow crazy I know but uh it's just like when they when they don't know about what happened with the original pigeon junk like sure they can learn that info from stuff like this but other ones like any ones we talked about before like like um the uncle dunks dude like who that was born after 2008 know, knows anything about uncle dunks this well, could have I been mean, a great opportunity for a moment to be taught here and it's not well i mean we said this there's multiple there's more parts to this you know to this That's, that is true and I no, mean, I, and I think it'll cover everything. It looks very promising, honestly. And at the end of the day, I mean, when we look at the when we look at Nike SB, I mean, uh, Chunky, Travs, Tiffany's, you know, Pigeons. I mean, those are like probably like you know four of the the biggest you know in terms of height, like in terms of release. Yeah. So I mean, mm -hmm. I could, I mean, yeah, they just. Yeah, I, I get it. They're gonna put some new stuff. They're gonna put some old stuff. You know, so I, I'm not mad at that. I mean, those two sneak, those Travis, like you know, people are going crazy for those shits. All right, here just to kind of like pile onto this conversation, and then we can kind of move on from the doc. Uh, if there was gonna be an episode based on one of the dunks, which dunk would you like covered? So, like, say, so Staple obviously had like a little moment here. What shoe would you like to get a shine in? Because I would love to see what happened with the Heineken dunk from their perspective. Ooh. Uh, Kruger is that, dunk? Because that one is – that's not a bad one. Kruger dunks. I'd like to hear how, how the copyright kind of fell out on that or how uh, the skunks – how, how – how? The 420 skunks? Just how. When did when – did, who convinced Nike that that would be a good idea? Okay, that's, those are, that's two great ones. Uh, those are good. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I know we have so many docs on, on Tiffany's, but let's just keep it with them. Like, I think that, that also, you know, also but, you could loop in the new one to the old one and see like that, if they did that. Yeah. yeah I mean? with, with Nikki diamonds in the shade there. Well, yeah, man, from the, the canary yellow limited joints to the black, to the white, to the fucking OG, to the highs, like, you know, they've had some, they've had a great run. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to this content stuff, like this, the the shows are usually kind of bad, like the the sitcom written type of stuff. But I I hope that just like you know, in the way that we're trying to like talk about this shit and also sort of like you know document it in our way, that we can get stuff like this because the kids don't know, and without the kids knowing, that the shit's not going to carry over well. Yeah, that's yeah. it's where the it's where my concerns for where the culture is going. That's where, like, my at least with like when I bring up the argument about Jordans and Yeezys and all that other stuff, it's like the, the when you start to dilute that history with a million fucking colorways on a Jordan One, you know what happens? The kids just see it less as a uh -huh. as this this man's this the shoe that a man played in, and just like as a, like a a Payless shoe, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, let's uh. I want to talk. I do want to talk about this since you know we we are talking about docs and and you know and 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 shit. Uh, we had a we had a text conversation uh, last night, and we talked about this Netflix series. Uh, it was the Sneakerheads. Yes. Yeah. And I I watched the first couple of episodes, 
And um, Luke, do you watch the whole series or did you watch? I got, I got through the first two episodes. That was all I could get through. Okay. And then Chris, did you watch? I didn't watch any of it. All I know is that my friend Chris Vidal, uh, I don't know if he was joking or being serious. It seemed more lighthearted. Uh, but he was asking if he should get a lawyer because apparently a part of his, like, his life story is in the show. Really? Yeah. I don't know what part, though. I know, like, I mean, he did. He was on Tyra, and, like, he had mm. some, like, you know, he was mm. the first manager of the Flight Club store in New York. So, he, whatever, I'm sure that, you know. But, yeah, I'm not sure what part. And, um, Luke, since, since you and I are actually at the same uh, place, and, you know, yeah. it's, it's a Netflix uh, series about, I guess, the underworld or, you know, the, of sneakers. Is that, is that a good way to just kind of describe it? I mean, it? I guess so. It's kind of like, it's weird. It's like, it turns into like this weird Indiana Jones hunt for the Air Jordan Zero, which is dumb. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, Wait, that's, that's the, the premise of the show? Like, I well, I mean, we, I don't know how many episodes there are, but we've, I, we've watched the first two and it's about, I guess... It's basically, say, for example, Chris, you and I, right? And I, you and I, you know, we have some weird, you know, we were friends or whatever. We were in the sneaker game and we used to do all this shit together. Mm-hmm. And then I get married and then you're still in the game and I'm, I got a family and, and then you're still getting to me and you're getting me into these stupid scenarios of like trying to like, you know, get, uh, go to sneaker storage spots and like bid on you know okay storage yeah like you know storage bins that are you know people haven't paid for so we can try to cash out and make money right and i'm spending you know my wife hates you know you and the sneaker (laughs) world and and now we're on this zany mission because i'm five thousand dollars in the hole because i tried to you know get a sneaker storage lot and I got to get, so now, you know, you meet some <laughs> random, you, 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 you meet some random girl who, you know, who she's good who, with the phone. She's good with the phone. <laughs> okay. She's a fucking reseller and she's yeah. got all these connections with, you know, flight club and this, and she knows the <laughs> celebrity. And, you're going to go to this person and you're going to tell him this, and then you're going to say this, and then you're going to get these. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But, you know, and then it's like, you know, and then it's and like, then your dumb friend goes, no, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do exactly what we were told to do. Because Wait, am, am I the dumb it. friend so, or is Lawrence okay, yeah. the dumb friend? No, so basically, there was there was I guess in episode two there was a. Did you scene. Kite, did you typecast me as the dumb guy? You made me the dumb guy on purpose. We're no. good at casting people. That's all. <laughs> there was a scene in episode two that was like it was so upsetting where she I guess she. Uh, the the fixer that's what I'm gonna call her she's like a fixer of things it feels like she, like she hooks, told, she's the plug she f- hooks everybody up with the shoes that they want yes so she, so she told she told the guy who's five grand in the hole me to go she to, told me no, no. Up, just listen because oh, okay. really, now you, oh, you're, okay. you're ruining the moment all right all right I'm sorry I'm sorry go, so go, go. she told so she told the guy she said you need to go to this I guess this video shoot and then go grab a pair of off-white Jordan ones, because when you grab the off-white Jordan ones, then you will be able to take those to the Flight Club and get. And the the one of the guys is gonna give you five grand for these off-white Jordan ones. Am, right. Uh-huh. Am I saying it right, Luke? Is that yeah? That's it, about it. That's about what happens. But what happens is the friend then when they're at this video shoot, he then tries to. He persuades the guy who's 5K in the hole to go get the red Octobers, which are just sitting on the table as well for this video shoot. So, so he somehow lets them talk him into getting the red Octobers because they're worth more money. Okay. Which this is all, all of this is already feeling fake as fuck. Because you you already have some of the hypest shoes in all of. Sneakers. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like some sort of like gambling story that they just like retrofit it to sneakers i mean that's what it feels like it doesn't feel like there's like that's my problem with it like this guy had a clear addiction to sneakers in the beginning like it's in the first 15 minutes of the show is that you uh-huh. know that this guy had a, a sneaker problem uh-huh. coke and problem then, and then he he goes but it's like it's almost to a, it's it's the point where it's like dude it's 
it's too obvious. It's too obvious that the guy has like a sneaker addiction, and it's like, I, it's not, it's not believable in a way because it's like his friend doesn't really like his friend's not really a friend either. They're they're all kind of shitty. <laughs> it, I mean, once again, I don't know how many episodes there are, but it just it felt like you know, and I and, and I've I've gone on record as saying that I feel like there isn't a actual portrayal of sneakers it, how it, it, there is not a there's not a, a actual representation of this industry that people have been part of for years it's either you come off as it's like either documentaries that portray people these people as like losers and like mm-hmm. like like you know like tryhards and all that tryhards or you have this this kind of like fake story and i feel like yeah. so many people want into this industry like so many people are I'm a sneakerhead and, you know, and, and then people see like, like, you, like they see this and they're like, oh, I can make so much money off of this, this right, yeah. game. And I feel like, you know, and then I, I just feel like it's just never truly believable. And it's like, it's like they use so like for, for someone to really understand this or really get into this, I feel like you got to be a person who understands sneakers. because there's so much inside terms that are used improperly and, it's just it's so I didn't I didn't really like it, but I'm gonna watch it. Um, I'll keep I'll keep giving it a shot if Lawrence gives it a shot. But like I'm telling you, I don't like any of these characters. They're all doing really like dumb shit. You mm-hmm. know? Right, you know, I'll watch. I'm in. All right, now we got a we got a pod uh, review segment now of sneakers from Netflix. I, here's what you're supposed to do. All right, you want to make a real good sneakerhead character in like a show or something. You give it so make it like a CSI or something, and make one of the forensics guys a sneakerhead. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then he's able to figure out different things about like he's able to so- help solve some of the, the murders off of his knowledge of sneakers. Oh, so he sees like that is a Air Jordan three sole here. So we need to find somebody that seems somebody with an be... Air Jordan three sole. Oh, but we're also seeing a couple hits of denim in there. Okay, so something <laughs> a newer model. You know, like we're seeing denim fragments in the. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> SCSI, the sneakerhead version of this thing. Uh, yeah, oh, that's like know. an anime level. Like you know how like anime does that thing. So Lawrence, in anime, there's a thing where a lot of the times, oh my god, a lot of times there's a trope where characters have really they have they know how to do one thing really well, mm-hmm. and and it they take it to like its literal extreme, like. There'll be guys who are like, I don't know how to do anything. I just know how to punch really good. And then he can punch everything. And that's how he solves all of his problems. This is how, how, this, is how this character would be handled. He just knows sneakers. That's all he knows. That's all he knows. And that's how he gets him out of every situation. I, Luke, I tried to do a character, I think, in the single digits of this show called the Hype Beast Hunter, where it was, uh, who, uh, who's the guy who died? The Stingray? I'm blanking right now. Steve Irwin. Yeah, he was Steve Irwin, but he was just hunting hype beast sneakers hilarious i think we i think we have a show guys i think we can write a better show we can probably <laughs> write a better show than this <laughs> mm-hmm. well all right i'm gonna watch now i'm gonna watch with you guys and now we're gonna have a little powwow every pod about this horrible show we're gonna do one episode each yeah. pod so get to episode two uh get to the part where uh where the the scene with the red octobers get angry wait a week then finish episode two yeah because that doesn't even make it easy they really just crammed the sneaker shit in there because not only would first off there's no photo there's no video shoot that has a fresh pair of red octobers right now they're all too beaten mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. yeah uh and like yeah they're really just trying to shove everything in here you got red octobers you got air jordan off-white ones what yeah. were some other sneakers in there uh they put the concord <clears throat> 11s in there uh, and they tried to like they sold it to some kid who didn't know anything about sneakers, and they sold it to him for like six hundred bucks. Oh my! So already, so there's encouraging scamming young that's kids. That's what I'm saying. They're oh like, they, my god! They treated this kid like shit, and I'm like, you're supposed to be the protagonists of the story. I'm supposed to like you, and you'd fucking scam this white kid. Out I mean, of, look, out that is bucks. that's pretty real. That's a real. Mm-hmm. I'm no, that's sure also that real. All the time. I'm not saying that it isn't, but it's also like, but why <laughs> you know like it's just because it's because you just keep putting yourselves in like they keep doing the wrong thing and it's like yeah. it's just gonna go down a shitty path like uh-huh. you already kind of see where the end of the season is gonna end up 
All right. Well, I'll watch. I'll circle back with you guys. I guess uh, so through episode three and next yeah. week, and we'll talk. And mm-hmm. and they got like mad people fired already. They okay. they ruined the saw. They've ruined the plug for everybody. I, all right. Well, I'm okay. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> This is like, <laughs> okay, this is going to be funny. I feel like, because some, some of the other, uh, like, media I listened to, they were doing, like, um, power reviews, and it got mm-hmm. so bad that they were watching to see how bad it got. I'm going to go in like this. I'm going to go, I'm going to say, I'm going to watch something real bad <laughs> and yeah, pick it apart. Yeah, in, buddy. Yeah, it's pretty bad, man. Um, wow. Well, I mean, I think we're closing in on our time here. Um, Damn, now I just committed to watching a bad show every week. This is great. Uh, yeah, this is like <laughs> the last time we did this was The Last Dance. Yes. Mm-hmm. And well, yeah, a is... lot of documentaries coming out since The Last Dance, by the way. Real quick, a lot of guys putting nope. a lot of stuff together. Well, some mm-hmm. hot docs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. All right, what about Hypeless Heat, Final Thoughts, and Out? Mm-hmm. Anybody got one? I do. Do you guys? If you're not ready, though, I don't want to be the only one. We don't have to. Uh, Lawrence, do you have one? I don't have one right now. I have an idea, but I don't really have one. Mm. You can go first, Chris. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm keeping it in the spirit of Bachtober. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm also keeping it in the spirit of not only p- shoes that are good right now, but in the basic theme. I feel like me and Luke kind of try to cover the basics as much as we can, but I'm just going to go with the Reebok Club C. A lot Ooh. of Club C has been coming out this year. Like, Jound has one. Sneeze did one. Um, just keep it. This is like super simple. This is like equivalent to like a Stan Smith for Reebok. If anybody is like unfamiliar with what this shoe is, but like this year, I feel like not only was New Balance 992 is kind of like up there in like the collaborative releases, but Club C's were getting a lot of love. Like I said, the Sneeze, uh, and the Jound. Um, and then there was that chocolate dipped one. Yeah, that one was that one was fire, and there's there's a couple of really good ones, but this is the core. This is the uh, this is the OG right here. Club C is a great shoe. Can't go yeah, wrong and with it. It's another one. It's seventy bucks. It's another one of these ones where it's just like if you are if you're a basic guy and uh, kind of like dress dad but a hype dad, like the, you can rock these all day in multiple pairs. Oh hell yeah! I I'm waiting to transition into full hype dad <laughs> mode. That's my dream. Is to be swaggy daddy. <laughs> Swaggy, I don't ever say that in my ear again. <laughs> I never want you to, in, while I have headphones and speak into a microphone and call yourself Swaggy. What today? if I whispered it? <laughs> no, that's worse. <laughs> that's worse. I'm not gonna do it because Lawrence's uh, headphones are in, and that's out of respect for Lawrence. I appreciate <laughs> that, you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lawrence, for existing during this moment. Uh. All right, I got one. I'm gonna go a little bit. I'm gonna go go a little bougie on this one. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go Visvim, uh, uh, the Lamo Folk beaded suede boots. So the moccasins, basically, the Visvim moccasins. Uh, okay. I don't. We don't really talk about moccasins on here because they're sometimes they're, they're a pretty goofy shoe. You know, but, we don't actually talk about Visvim a lot either. But Visvim, Visvim's always been on my radar because they did like a photo shoot with like John Mayer in like 2012 when he was re- like re- reborn as like some just a weird dude. Oh wait, were they? Was it these ones you were talking about? Not yeah, these. these. Oh, these. these okay, yeah. Nice. So I, I, uh, I enjoy these. I don't own a pair because I, I just can't afford them. But I always appreciate seeing them on the on the street. They're a pretty versatile shoe as far as like how fits go, um, and the quality of the suede is very high quality. From uh, my my friend owns a pair, and I've uh, I've seen them and I felt them and. Uh, yeah, man, they're they're probably one of the better moccasins out there. Because if you're gonna go moccasin, you should go all the fucking way and make it feel like it's it's like you know it's before times. Yeah, I mean, I know someone who has these. He also has expensive taste. Yes. Um, and these do fucking crush in the summer when you can really let the whole thing be seen. Yeah, that is a flex and a half. So, good pick, Luke. That's what's up. Thank you. Uh, I, I think I'm just gonna go with some uh, Timberland uh, six inch the wheats. Oh, my man, going back to the roots. Back to the roots. That's the that's the New Yorker in here. Dead ass B. Yeah, yeah, dead ass. Dead ass, my guy. Start starting to get cold, you know. Facts. You got Lawrence is it. Lawrence is gonna be wearing the dead serious hoodie with the dead ass boots. You know what I mean? He's gonna be <laughs> dead head to toe. That is correct. 
God damn. Mm-hmm. They, I love these shoes, man. These, they're really, if, you know, when I was like, when I was younger and I couldn't afford these and I was getting lugs, um, I was hating from the outside. But w- uh, once I got my hands on my first pair when I was like 17, um, yeah, I was like, oh no, this is a life changing shoe. Yep. Um, look, I, I can't say anything too particular. You're not a fan. No, I, I are you kidding me? I love these. I'm surprised okay. Lawrence brought these up because he's he's like not like the real Tim guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, Tim. Yeah, as far as Tim's go. Um, but what I will say is, a life has something coming out with Timberland soon, bro. Mm-hmm. You guys should pay attention. I can't say too much about it, but it's fucking fire, and I can't wait to wear them. They're so fucking sick. Okay, I can't wait to see them. All right. I'll tell you guys off um, off mic, but um. Also, do you you want DM me on the Discord and I'll probably tell you, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I won't. I don't know yet. But these are all great picks, guys. This was up. Um, all right. Any final thoughts before we go? Uh, nothing. Uh, nothing. Uh, New York early voting starts this week, I believe. Uh, Thursday, right? Yes. So if you're in the New York area and you want to go vote, go, go vote. Do it now. Look, Get it over with. Uh, I mean, if you're I mean, do the right thing, but also if voting for Kanye is your right thing, then, I mean, go for it. But do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Do the right thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, trying to think. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, yeah, why, why force? Why force yeah, it, no. Man? I think not, we had a good episode. To. Yeah, this was a great episode. Um, so, you know, you could follow us at the Sub Podcast NYC Instagram, which there's an email and a phone number that you can either text or leave a voicemail to. Or you can email us questions. We answer all these on air if they're uh, worth it. Don't. Some of you guys be sending me funny shit. Don't. I'm not gonna play that on the air, but they're funny for me. So if you want to fuck with me, that's fine too. But uh, they're not mm-hmm. getting recorded on here. But um, yeah. So you can follow at Trevisus, Luke, me at Not That Cheney, uh, Lawrence is LZD three two five. You know the Discord. There's always a link in the description. Um, I don't know if you guys for the YouTube viewers. I always have like articles up for when we refer to some of the topics i'm going to start putting those links that we use in the description so if you want to get like more informed based off the things that we're reading go to the description they're going to be in there i think that's about it sounds about it sounds about right so all right guys uh good pod fun shit and then uh, i guess we'll talk next week about sneakerheads on netflix there we go peace all right, peace, peace guys